Hello, everybody. Welcome to this awesome round table with two of the most beautiful women on the internet, the lovely Medina and the lovely Catherine. I've said it before. I know people get mad at me when I say this, but all of the women on this side of the board to me are just absolutely stunningly gorgeous. And I think it's because we're all just in the light. And so I am so honored to be here with my two friends, Medina and Catherine. Uh, obviously, we're rep I, I always forget. I mean, I know we're in different countries because we have to coordinate time zones. But at this point, I feel like this situation we're in, it's it's so like we're all globally kind of together. So it doesn't even feel like we're really divided by nations anymore. It's just, you know good versus evil, you know? So, so we go, but we have Catherine in England, obviously it's very late over there. It's four o'clock in the afternoon here on the East coast. And of course we have Medina over in Australia where it's all, she's time traveled. She's in a whole new day right now. <laughs> <Thursday> <laughs> <morning>. <laughs> she's our time traveler. So, and Medina, I was telling Catherine this just to start off on some humor before we get started. Um, before you job jumped on now, Catherine and I have spoken about uh, off camera and our life before YouTube and Catherine still does this. And I still do this occasionally in the jobs we did. We never wore makeup. Catherine's outside a lot. I'm in hot, sweaty yoga shalas. So putting on makeup every day to be on YouTube was something new for me. And I had found this eyeliner that I really, really liked. And it's a really light, you can kind of see it's a light brown eyeliner. And for the last few days, I've been searching for this eyeliner because I'm about to run out of it. And I finally picked it up to see if I could find the brand. And it turns out it's a lip liner. I have been putting a <laughs> lip liner on my eyes this whole time. <laughs> so, um, so just a little humor to start off. <laughs> <laughs> you can't laugh at yourself and who, who can you laugh at? So, so anyway, how, how are you ladies doing? Well, I've been, um, as you both know, that's why I haven't connected with you. I've missed the sort of last two things because I've not been very well and the whole family haven't been very well. And it's weird. It's one of the things I wanted to talk to you about, Jay, because it's really interesting to see people's perspectives to that and how people react to it and everything. It's quite hysterical, really. Um, so, yes, if I'm looking a bit flushed, I've got a bit of a temperature still, but I'm really good in myself, and I've really enjoyed having a break from everything over Christmas. Not that I don't love it, but it's been really nice. I've sort of had a very electronic-free Christmas, and I think that's really done me a lot of good, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I, I find that um, the, the energy, like the, the last 14 days, there's been all these portals opening of, of high vibrational energy coming through and, and, and that's been huge. So we've all been integrating that and um, that, that could also be, Catherine, maybe uh, shifting some of the old stuff out to make way for the, for the new energies. So I, I feel that um, we're all going through a very intensive um, integration at the minute and recalibration of our energy. And, and that can present as all sorts of symptoms and, you know, headaches or being tired or, or whatever. So just really listening to your body at the moment and honouring your body and communicating with your body about what it needs and what it wants in order to get through this um, energetic shift that we're going through. And I think, Catherine, did you freeze? Can you hear us? <sighs> Let me text her quickly. Oh, hopefully she'll pop back on. Let me shoot her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, quick text. No, I love that Medina. Um, because we talk about that a lot in traditional yoga about, um, hold on, let me just text her quickly. Well, yeah, it, 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 it's very much um, a thing that people are intuitively feeling and then they might be sort of thinking, oh, you know, there's something wrong with me or whatever, but, it, but it's not, you know, no. necessarily that. And then and on top of the individual feelings that you're feeling, you're, you're getting the collective global energy of it as well. So everyone's collectively trying to, you know, integrate it and so they're, they're, they're sort of releasing stuff <laughs> and then you're, yeah. you're also releasing stuff. So you, half the time you don't know what's yours and what someone else's anyway. <laughs> exactly no we the three karmas we're all working with that we talk about and again karma guys really if you just break it down karma is just action and reaction it's your work it's the work that you have to get through in this life and we all have three karmas one is your own personal karma you know the from past lives you believe in that this life um Another is uh, your DNA, your karma from your ancestors, because that is a part of your DNA. And then also the collective consciousness. So whatever timeline you're in, you're dealing with that. You can't separate yourself from everybody else. You're all going through that thing together. And what's great. 
what great a time to see that that right now we're literally shifting everything. And you know, my teacher in India used to get really excited. I've talked about this on my channel before when you would get the yoga fever, like when you would get a fever, because it yes. meant that your body was destroying old patterns. The fire of your body was breaking down old patterns to bring in new ones. And we have this weird, especially in the West, this weird kind of fear of sickness. You know, isn't it? Because the minute you, you get a fever, you're encouraged by the obviously by the pharmaceutical <laughs> corporations to take a panadol, which brings it down and allows you not to work through that spiritual shift so that you can evolve. So it actually uh, prevents and um, sort of um, puts a, a barricade against you moving forward on your spiritual journey. Isn't that, I find that so fascinating, especially where we are right now. I mean, even uh, viruses and stuff that we, I mean, when I was a kid, we got the chicken pox. There was no, you know, yes. for the chicken pox. And I was telling the story the other day, my mother, I, I have a memory. I was probably in like the first grade. So what, seven years old. And I remember my mother going on like a scavenger hunt to find a kid in my class who had the chicken pox so that I would go play with that kid. And yes. get the chicken pox and then give it, it to, my to my partner as well. He he was encouraged to go and play with the kids that all had the chicken pox as well um, so that they could actually build immunity within their system. Yeah. yeah. And that's so that it, that is that was where as kids we, we came from. And I know that when I was born in 1983, so I know that I was like the last generation to only get a few of, of that after it started yes. doubling and doubling and doubling, you guys know what we're talking about. So I feel yes. like my generation was one of the last to actually have that real true um, initiation into human being a human and, and having your DNA develop. Um, because, yes. you know, I, I mean, my grandfather was a surgeon and he used to tell my mother to let me go get dirty. Let me put mud in my exactly. go mouth. And, go and play in the mud. That's right. Oh, I mean, that's so important for kids today. And 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 of course, there's so much on the on the technology that that they they find it quite alien sometimes to just get dirty. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I know. It's you know, yeah. and there's that funny story from um, the Hindu text of Krishna, who the Christ for the that the Bhagavad Gita, one of their avatars when he was a child, he was uh, Govinda. And there's that story of, you know, Govinda putting mud in his mouth as kids do and animals do it too. It's part of learning. And the mother yeah. comes to like take the mud out of his mouth and she sees the whole universe inside. But even in the Hindu text, they're talking about allowing, you know, the human body to be activated, allowing the nervous system to be activated, allowing the immune system to be activated in order yeah. to change and shift. And so, you know, the more it's like, once you see it, you can't unsee it. Like you realize what's been done to us to try to keep us at this lower vibrational frequency instead of allowing our DNA to, to grow into what it, what it should be. The consciousness. I, it should I, be. I, I, I couldn't say it better. My, one of my favorite books that I've ever read is biography of a yogi, you know, mm -hmm. Yogananda. Yeah, I love yeah. that. It's so incredible. Like it just makes you want to go straight to India. When you read that book. It's, you, it's so I have to ask you a question. When you read the book, did you have visions of him? Did he come to you? Uh, yes, yes. Not I couldn't physically um, see him per se, but I could feel the energy, and I I felt a lot of um, sort of things happening that were very metaphysical. You know, after reading the book, oh you know, wow, like, like, yeah, spiritual shifts and and energy and all that sort of thing. Yeah, Catherine yeah. And just, Catherine just texted and said her mother had switched off the internet, so she's going to come back on soon. Um, <laughs> so, so, oh, here she is. Good. No, I, 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 uh, I definitely, um, yeah, that happens when you read the autobiography of a yogi, many people will have an ex spiritual experience with Yogananda. So, yes. um, so that's why I had to ask, um, hello. Hi. Yes. <laughs> <Bye. laughs> I'm at my mom's house and she forgot I was doing the video and she switched the internet mm -hmm. off for the night and I was. <laughs> <laughs> no, Catherine, oh, you. As an adult, when you guys were at your parents' house, do you revert, revert back to being like 16 again? I always feel that way yeah. at my mom's house. Like That's I'm so 16 funny. again. What's that? What are you doing? You've just cut off my video. Like, oh. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, carry on, ladies. I'm back we, with you now. We, we, you missed, we were talking about the importance of you have been sick, about, about being sick and allowing your body to kind of flush out these patterns and how we've kind of been taught 
that um, especially of, of late that being sick is wrong. And yes. I was saying in the East, like my, my teacher in India gets very excited when you get the yoga fever um, th- that your body is actually reacting to the work you're doing in order to burn away. You think about nature, like forest fires, like real forest fires, not you guys know what we're talking about, but the real ones, nature will do that to itself to cleanse itself. And that's what our human body does too. And I was saying, Catherine, like when I was a kid uh, with a chicken pox, my mother went on a scavenger hunt to find a kid in my class who had had the chicken pox so that I would go play with him and get the chicken pox. And it's just, it's amazing in such a short amount of time, how that um, perception has shifted to now it's like, we're not allowed to, to get sick, you know? It's lost, lost knowledge, I think, you know, that, we, that, that um, has been sort of um, hidden from us and, and, and lost. And we need to tap into all those natural ways, you know, and that includes all, you know, the herbs and everything to, to naturally um, tap into that to, to fix this a, a solution for absolutely everything. And often in nature, they're together, like you'll find a, um, something that poisons you and then next to that will be something that um, detoxes that or, you know, and they're often together in nature. So we, we, we just need to go back to those roots. <laughs> how our ancestors knew how to do it, didn't they? Yeah. I'm a, well, I'm a herbalist and I work exactly with oh. that, with animals and humans, <laughs> but with something self-medication. And it's amazing when you look at it. And don't you think it's a real reflection of where we're at, where this whole mentality of wanting to suppress everything. And it's like, it's really important to cleanse out the toxins that renew it. It makes me laugh because I've been thinking of doing a water fast for a while and now I've had an enforced one. <laughs> but it's... <laughs> so Be careful what you wish for. <laughs> If you don't live there enough, they'll give it. But we, we don't want to suppress things. It's a it's a natural part cycle of life, isn't it? To go through healing stages. And I think it's I've just been absolutely horrified by I don't know sort of how much you covered this by but on both sides. So you've got on one side everyone saying, Oh my god, it's not, you know, what is it? And I'm like, well, what does it matter if it is? If you're ill, it is. What does it matter what the label is? Because most diseases are, are just man-made labels that the root cause is the same anyway. Um, but then you've got on the other side of things, the sort of more the truth type of things are like, oh, well, oh, well, I'm not ill because I do this and I do that, I do that. And it, it's hysterical, isn't it? I think uh, I've been noticing on both sides a lot of, ego sort of kicking in and sort of like oh well not me because I'm this and I'm session as this and you're just like let it let let life go through phases let it go through the ups and downs you know in nature there's a reason why they say you do a detox as the leaves come off the trees and as the leaves go on the trees to cleanse your body out of the stuff so I, I found it quite fascinating although I would use the word irritating at the same time <laughs> Well, you, can, you can really block your progress, can't you? When you're when you're just uh, really trying, striving really hard to stay, um, basically stagnant because you you, you, yes. you don't want to change the status quo. But you know, when we'll do anything as human beings to avoid pain and to avoid <laughs> anything uncomfortable. But you know, when when you surrender that and you allow yourself to be in the actual flow of of what the universe brings for your highest good then you're going to be experiencing more, you know, um, the, 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 the more um, souls that are sort of, I guess, without judgment, you know, at a higher level that they go through more challenges in life because that's part of the um, spiritual learnings. And so, yeah, just sort of releasing judgment and surrendering and letting go, letting God. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's so yeah. funny. You sound just like me when I teach my classes because I teach traditional yoga. It's very different perception than like what you see in the Western world. And that's something I say, all the time is allowing yourself to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. And mm. my original teacher, before I started going to India, a man named David Grieg uh, up in Philadelphia, I would fly to Philadelphia to practice with him before I started going to India. And he had the same teacher as I did from the same lineage. And he said, you know, the practice that we do of Ashtanga, it can be very painful. You're looking at putting legs behind your head, deep back bending. It pulls up a lot of emotional stuff. I mean, that's the whole point of the postures is to pull that stuff out of you so that you can examine it. And my teacher asked our, uh, the group, we call him Guruji, uh, Guruji, is it necessary for this practice to be so painful? And Guruji said, yes, because pain is real. Pain is real. 
Mm. And, and it shifts you through things. Like, mm. you know, otherwise you just don't challenge yourself. You don't, no. you don't want to extend yourself to go further than where you already are. Right. Um you know, there, there's a lot of fear with that. It's 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 about transmuting fear, isn't it, as well? Yeah, false up. My teacher in India, that's what you see. He walks around the room. He's like, why fearing? Why fearing? Why fearing? You know, and you're like, why am I fearing? Why Why am I? I love in, in India, they put the eye, like pain. They'll say, why painting? Like they put the ING on everywhere. I love it. Um, but yeah, it is. It comes, it comes down to you breaking that down. And one thing too that we know from the practice you know, for me, my hamstrings are pretty open. My hips are pretty open. So some of the postures like like behind the head or deep forward folding was never really hard for me. And so my mind would kind of drift in those easier postures for me. But backbending was where shit got real for me. Excuse my language. But and, and, it, and it a teacher said to me once, but think about that. The areas where things are hard, where's your mind in those areas? Your mind mm -hmm. is present. Your mind mm. is present on the mo in the moment. So yeah, yeah, what are you yeah, figuring out in this area? You're present there. Because you'll be holding things in your back because mm -hmm. that's where you store energy that um, perhaps is, is difficult to shift through and everyone will be different. You know, some people might have it in their organs or their legs or whatever and, and it depends on the person. So it's really, I think, helpful to go to the parts of the body where you are holding that energy and, you know, going in and seeing what is stored at a cellular level in your body at that point and then transmuting it. I mean, I had a um, client contact me the other day and she said, look, you know, I've had some stuff come up with my kidneys what what a kidney is about and I, I encouraged her to really um, research what what the kidneys represent you know look at the Louise Hay metaphysical work of what what do the kidneys hold uh, what are the affirmations that you can use for that and 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 what experiences have you had in this incarnation where you have held on to that energy in your kidneys and not allowed it to flow through and and so you know it, it's really having that communication with your body and understanding that your body's here to try and help you and it's just a messenger and um, and the other thing is that fear is false evidence appearing real it's yep. not actually um anything to be concerned about but again it's a messenger yeah and your kidneys yeah. are tied to the knees too so people have knee issues sometimes that's coming back up to the kidneys as well and yeah it's nothing it's nothing to be afraid of like this like being sick in my opinion being sick is nothing to be afraid of it's um anytime again with fevers and congestion and all that kind of stuff sometimes that's just a sign that you're evolving that your DNA is actually evolving um, in this life. Taking new bits into it and incorporating that in and going for the next level of the upgrade. And, and also it doesn't, it really forces you to reevaluate things and take stock and sort of think, right, look at my diet, look at my lifestyle. Did I need a break? Do I need to turn off electronics for a while? All sorts of things to actually enable you to, to really look at things. So um, it's got so many benefits. And yes, you can, of course, help your body out of it. And that's really great to put all, in all these different tools and techniques to make sure that it doesn't escalate to an area that, that is going to cause trouble. Yep. But this constant wanting to resist anything, you know, it, it, it's Escapism. It's really, really a problem, I think, at the moment. And I think yeah. what's really a problem is the fact that people feel once they've labelled something, it changes the actual thing. So take it, take, take if I'm feeling ill. Well, it doesn't change what's happening with my body, what labels people put on that. Yeah. And yet it does to most people because you're then slipping into the fear road. And, and if it then gets labelled with something else like you know what, um, we're not allowed to say on here, then suddenly everyone's perception changes and that's going to change the way that your body responds to it. And it, then you're in this vicious circle. It's, uh, it, it's like when you have young people and they say, oh, that person's ADHD, blah, 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 blah. You know, the way I uh, look at that or uh, translate that is this person has a, a different energy. This person has an energy of the fifth dimensional realm and so they act that they they function differently and 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 they're in the world in a different way and so you know these labels tend to be very derogatory and um and disempowering and um so that's a great point Catherine I, I think that you know releasing these labels because the labels put us in a box and limit us they're yeah. very matrix driven 
you know, I, I've, I've thought about this before too, like about, you know, I, I went to a private school and of course I think things are, I mean, I graduated from high school 20 years ago, so I'm sure it's very different now. But even when I was a kid, they were constantly testing us, constantly, constantly testing us. And so they were like separating kids, separating them by like what came up on their test results, which some people just don't test well, but they're super intelligent. And so I think, I think from a very young age, you're right. We're just labeling things. And it's even with sicknesses, it's putting people in these, uh, these jail sales of their mind where they can't break free of that when um i mean the same thing happened to todd he was told he was add as a child but one of his gurus told him he was just born with more prana more energy um you know and he's and he and they often function quite fast in the world because it's a different energy that functions very um at its highest potential in the fifth dimensional energies but in the 3d it doesn't really adapt as well because the 3d is so dense and it can't Mm -hmm. it it finds it hard to be able to um express itself in that reality yep that's exactly it. That's exactly it. He, as a teenager, I actually, when he lived in London, uh, he found skateboarding and started finding ways to maneuver it and then ended up moving to India and that, you know, so that prana was there for a reason, but they wanted to like dumb it down with, med- with medication basically, you know, mm-hmm. but yeah, I think, I think that's something moving into the new, the new earth, the new timeline, we have to reconsider all of this. And I think our ancestors knew this. I think our yes. ancestors were very yes. tapped into this. Yes. Um, and, and, and Catherine's animals. I bet all your animals know all this, Catherine. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting thing because one of the things that, a few of the things that I have been listening to recently with uh, some interviews, and it's a constant theme that comes up, and I was mentioning to Bryce just before we started, actually, about this, this um, perception, even in the, the spiritual world or the awake world, but that everything revolves around the human race. Which I find really, really fascinating because yes. when, <laughs> yeah, I just, it is really, I've been listening to a lot and it's all about almost how the whole planet is affected by the humans, how the, um, you know, obviously looking into our DNA, looking into our ancestry and everything. But what I don't realize is that applies to every living thing on, world, on the earth. And if you really truly believe that everything is all interconnected, well, that's just not humans. That's also rocks, that's plants, that's every animal, that's the earth, it's the, the microorganisms living in the earth. And I've been giving a lot of thought to this sort of, how can I explain it? This sort of yeah, I think there's a word. There's a word for that, human centric or something. <laughs> yeah, but that and it's really fascinating, and I do see it a lot in the spiritual community, in the awake community, and I do feel we're missing a trick. I think if we took the focus off us as a species completely. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't embrace all the gifts and all the wonderful abilities that we have got and that we can bring to the whole bigger picture and our role on the planet. But I just find it, it's quite limiting for me to see how much people are saying it is the world according to humans and everything else is virtually just here to please us. It's like yeah. a little kid, isn't it? Like little kids, you know, when 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 the, the whole universe revolves around them. Actually, I've got a poem about that. <laughs> that I read later. Oh, I can't wait to hear that. <laughs> yeah, that actually segues quite nicely. Into that. <laughs> but um, um, you know, little kids, though, they just think everything is is about them. And and so when you have a level of emotional immaturity or um, immaturity, um, you as a as a human being on, on the spiritual path, you still see yourself as the center of everything um shall i read this poem now yes it's, it's, do. It's, all, do. it's really funny how you, you mentioned that because it's exactly what this poem's about you know when um teenagers and kids think that the, you know the world revolves around them and that they know everything <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> and um it's called it's from my book um called um hell harry ass poems so i'll just i'll just show you oh i can't um, share that that's all right you want me to um, I must you also say there's quite a few adults that we know that have that attitude as well <laughs> <laughs> that's right, right. That's right. Um, Nadine, i think i think you can you can uh, share now if you want to 
Oh, thank you. It's just so people can see what the cover is. It was um, a book that I wrote called Hill Harry Ass Poems and uh, on the cover I wrote by a six-year-old adult because, you know, <laughs> a lot of kids really relate to that when you say that. And it was illustrated by a guy in Australia called Mark Payne who's the most incredible illustrator and um, so I was really gifted to have that. But um, I'll just read you one of the poems. It's available on my website if anyone wants to get a copy. But it's really fun and it's a lot of... Um, light relief at the moment in the midst of everything we're going through when, when you can have a good laugh. But this is called I Am a Child Genius. I am a child genius. Everyone says so. If any questions, I am sure to know. Some call it destiny. Some call it fate. Being so intelligent, it's hard to get a date. Simply no subject exists in which I have no clue. It's bound to be frustrating when I know much more than you. I will be famous shortly for what I cannot tell, but guaranteed in future years you'll know my name quite well. Architecture a snap, maths fun and games, geography easy, I never forget names, literature a breeze, stock market, kids play. If I was not so bored with it, I'd play it every day. I'm told to run for politics, a threat to any side. How can I be a candidate when I have never lied? A real child prodigy, I immodestly implore. There's one or two in history, or maybe three, no more. Einstein, an amateur, as far as I can see. Reading his life story, knew much less than me. Not one to brag or boast, I have no more to tell. For humble... Now ring my bell. <laughs> you cut off right at the end there. I was like, oh no, did Medina's mom cut the internet off too? <laughs> Read the last couple of lines, Medina, because we missed the last couple of lines. Oh, really? Oh, no. You cut out right at the end. I was like, oh no, Medina's mom shut the internet off too. <laughs> so. oh, no. but, but that was meant to be like a sort of a momentum yeah. building. <laughs> I'll, I'll read that last. Was it just the last verse? That last two lines. Read? Last two lines oh, that okay. you cut out on. Okay, so not the one to brag or boast. I have no more to tell. For humble to the very last, I never ring my bell. <laughs> Well, honestly, I can definitely think of some adults that this applies to too. <laughs> There's yes. some people I seriously want to be like, isn't it ex exhausting knowing everything? I guess you know, <laughs> what else? Isn't it exhausting just knowing everything? <laughs> but isn't that like the height of, my, my teachers say the height of spirituality is humor, is being able to laugh at yourself and laugh at the situations. But I also think the height of spiritual awareness is knowing you don't know anything. That you're, you really have no clue yes. about anything, you know, and that, especially learning that now with everything unfolding and knowing that the way that history has been taught to us is probably all just a load of baloney. Wow. <laughs> That's I, mean, right. I think I said yeah. last time, like if you had told me five years, I would be questioning um, what our planet looked like. I would have told you I was crazy. And at this point, I'm like, no idea what we're standing on. No, no fucking clue what we're standing on right now. And I'm okay with that because you know what? We're still standing. So, but, but knowing that having that sense of humility where you can accept, you don't know anything requires you to also have courage and have faith mm. in that unknown. And that's, that's hard for people. And it takes self-worth to say you don't know anything because when you have to sort of say, I know everything, there's a sort of an insecurity in that or a lack of feeling like you're um, worthy enough to be able to say that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's sort of like an inverted thing. <laughs> yeah, sorry <laughs> for the delay. <laughs> but, yeah, that's such an important point because and all, you've got to always be open to the fact that there's something at any minute another bit of information can drop which could completely change the way you view everything. And I think most people watching this video will have been through so many moments like that over the past few years and for a lot of people a lot young, uh, longer. But also that there's a reason why you're not meant to know everything all at once. You know, if you picked up... A, a good book or at the start of a film and went straight to the ending there'd be no point you know it's a bit of a cliche but it is all about the journey yeah. and how you involve and and what you do with the information and how open you feel because even when you look at things like friendships and things it's amazing how um people will put ego before friendship 
by not keeping that open mind and can throw away something so priceless. And I watched this weekend, I don't know if either of you two have seen it yet, the film Don't Look Up. Not yet, no, but I'm going to be watching it. We were thinking we might do like a book club review of it, Medina, if you're interested. So we will watch it and then do an online review because there's so many fascinating things in it. And its I won't give any of it away for those of you that haven't seen it, but it's an absolutely fascinating film. It's really interesting because if you look at the stars that are in there, Jennifer Lawrence, Leonardo DiCaprio, Meryl Streep, then you're, you're thinking, well, this is interesting. You've got this film on this subject with this car sort of in there. And But you've got to keep an open mind because when you look and follow the storyline and there's so much in it, it's absolutely fascinating when you look at what's going on at the moment. It really is. Now, I'm sure lots of people that don't understand what's going on would just think, oh, just an interesting film. But when you look at it with a bit of knowledge of the the lies, the complete fabrication, the changing of history, the manipulation. It is, it's absolutely priceless, I tell you. Oh, that sounds fantastic. The, the point that you made earlier too that, you know, we, we're just wanting to rush through this process mm. of this transition and we just want to get to the end and, you know, people are saying, oh, I can't wait till it's over, da, 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 and you're actually not in the present moment and you're not experiencing the journey. And so that's a real spiritual mastery test when you're doing something, again, that's uncomfortable but you're able to um, be in the moment and, and take everything um in, in in a present moment out of the journey in the now even if it's a journey that you don't particularly like or or it's uncomfortable um because i just hear so many people saying oh i can't wait till this is over i want it to finish i want to i want to get to the good world you know <laughs> the new earth and i i want to get through all this stuff so yeah I, th- I think that's a real test for us at the minute it's interesting you say that because one of my favorite most life-changing books I ever read, and a lot of people have read this, is the Bhagavad Gita. And I was actually showing, this is my favorite commentary um, by Ram Dass on the Bhagavad Gita, like the best commentary out there. And the Bhagavad Gita is basically that. You know, it's the story of Arjuna, who's basically standing on a battlefield and he's on the front line and he's looking across at the opposing side and he's seeing people that he's loved in his life, his friends, his teacher, his family. And he's having this like, oh crap, come to Jesus moment in this split second. And then Krishna is the avatar who has this conversation with him in this moment. And it kind of, as you're saying, this uncomfortable time where he's having to go, you know, battle people he loves. In that moment, he comes down and has this conversation with uh, Krishna, who is one of the avatars of God. Um, and, and basically, if he hadn't taken that moment, there wouldn't be so, so much, in, even though it's just a story, so much enlightening information where, you know, and that's also in that the Bhagavad Gita, people often think that all of yoga and spirituality is just light and love, but it's not. There's a darkness to it as well. And yes. that's what Krishna tells Arjuna, like, you're a warrior, buck up and go, go war. Like, this is your dharma. Well, the funniest yeah. thing is, the most amazing synchronicity, I have a quote here that I was going to share today by Ram Das. <laughs> I love yeah, okay, Yes, I love, he's my favourite Ram Das. <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing. It's on, my, it's on my computer ready to share. And this is it here. Um, and, and I just thought it's a classic. Oh, yes. We're talking about uncomfortable things. If you think you're enlightened, go spend a week with your family. So <laughs> a lot of people have just experienced this at the minute through the, the Christmas period. And, I mean, that that's the ultimate test, isn't it? Because often these um, family situations are, you know, often karmic, you know, mm-hmm. ones that we're to work through. And um, so I just thought that's so relevant to everything we're talking about. I know, and it was I really, love. It was I- right on my screen. <laughs> Ram Dass, all of his books are fantastic. He he left the earth plane like right before, I think it was like December of 2019, uh-huh. like right before everything kicked off. He yeah. but every people on my channel know I often quote, We are we're all just walking each other home, which is a Ram Dass quote. Uh, mm-hmm. we're all just we're all going to the same light, you know, we're all going to the same place. So I mean Catherine talking about the ego, if, if you really sit back and think we're all not just humans, but animals, nature, everything that has that spark of consciousness, we're all going home. We're all headed mm. to the same home. So why mm. do we have to have this arrogance? Why do and we why have can't to we hold hands? 
why can't we hold hands and do it together, you know, in a united way, as opposed to, you know, finding every little thing. I mean, I, I just posted a video um, about um, the originals, how basically um, that they've put a cease and desist letter on the parliament in, in Australia, which basically means that um, it, it's not a functioning entity anymore, uh, the parliament or the government in Australia, because, um, you know, they've, <laughs> they've just done that. And now uh, I put a post about that. It was a huge announcement, huge news. And um, there was three comments on, on the on the YouTube site saying, oh, I didn't like the sound. The sound wasn't good. I thought, what does it matter about the sound? Look at the announcement that we've just, that I've just put on here. You know? um, that sums up perfectly the Don't Look Out film. So I think we should make a date to all watch it and then do a review of it because when you see it, you will, what you've just said then, it's like we, we as humans spend so much time focusing on completely irrelevant unimportant things yes. and completely often it's the big picture, <laughs> the big picture. And it, it is as i say i won't say any more about it because if anyone it's difficult so watching it but you see that film and you're just like this is hysterical and very clever for that reason it's like how much more of an obvious example can you get about completely missing the whole point of life <laughs> So <laughs> it's funny when you guys were talking about um, a few minutes ago, we were talking about like not being okay with not knowing anything. I got this image in my head and we see this image a lot of like birds kept in cages and then the door opens and they won't leave the cage. And it's almost like for our whole lives as humans, we've been put in this cage that's been in drained into us through or drilled into us through, you know, school, society of what is reality and what is not, that we almost like keep ourselves in this cage. And it's almost like being able to say, well, I don't know what anything is at that door opening to let you then leave the cage, if that makes sense. You know, and that's the freedom of saying, I don't, I don't know. I have no idea what we're standing on. I have no idea, like really, and we, we know this is good versus evil, but that's about all we know at this point. And, um, and I think a part of this great awakening is finding that sovereignty, being able to stand up your, on your own two feet. And sometimes that is saying, I don't know. And I can go and listen to all these people give their opinions and still be content being in a place that I don't know, you know, exactly. so. tapping into the depths of the human spirit, because, you know, these are um, unnavigated waters that we've never charted before. And so, you know, Tapping into our, our our spiritual, our inner core is something that many people aren't used to because they're used to being told what to do and also living externally based on the external circumstances. So asking everyone to, to, to flip that around and just go within and navigate from a different place, which is your, in truth, that you have all uh, universal knowledge within you anyway. Um, and so it, it, it's redefining a whole way of uh, being in the world, our whole existence everything yeah and it's funny we're talking about like the arrogance sometimes i think that arrogance that people show is actually comes from a place of fear yes. yeah that they're wrong yeah. Yeah, but that's like if you if you have um um a, a superiority com, com uh, a superiority complex, you're actually more um feeling more insecure and unworthy than someone who has an inferiority complex, which is really interesting. Yeah, that is really interesting. Yeah. yeah. Well, see, oh, sorry, go ahead, Catherine. I was just going to say that arrogance it is, it's amazing how different, difficult humans find it to say sorry. Mm. Now, again, if you watch animals interacting and having fights or things like this, they have very clear submission and sort of apologies to each other. And it's not something that they find difficult at all. It's completely natural. Um, and it's, it's really fascinating to see how difficult it is for most humans to either say sorry or say I was wrong or to say, um, you know, to admit that they could have behaved in a different way. And I, I find that so fascinating as to why, why do we find it so difficult? You know, we, we've got these, I think it's that cage that you were saying it to, about, Bryce, about the bird cage and things. It's like, if you've been told you are this, and that's been embedded into you for so much of your life, it's then very, very difficult for people to sort of step outside of that. And I see it a lot with my children who are sort of 
well, actually, my daughter was 20 yesterday, so I have no more teenagers in the house, but 20 and 21. And it's just amazing how many people that are talking about the family thing. Every single conversation from grandparents and things like that is like, well, what's your plans? What are you going to do with your life? What are you going to do this? Oh, you can't do that because you've got to do something responsible. And, and I mean, I'm sitting there listening to those conversations. I can't quite believe what I'm hearing, but that is coming from all sort of older people. It's like, you know, there's this expectations or of everything. And I'm thinking, it's so, so sad. You can see why people find it so difficult to actually then have the courage to say, I'm going to try something completely different. And, and if I make a mistake and I don't like it, I'm quite prepared to then try something else. Yeah. And, you, you know, as, as you're saying, okay. I was thinking, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to ask, Catherine, do you think that that um, so ability that animals have to be able to, you know, do, uh, say sorry in their own way is a lack of ego? Do you think it boils down to that, Catherine? I do. I, do. I think it is. I do, do not see ego in animals. And I even see it in the human um, animal interaction as well. So one of my ponies, Romeo, is absolutely hysterical. He's the most communicative horse I've ever known. And um, we have some, you know, we're quite similar personality wise. Um, and he can really tell me off, for example, if I'm being disrespectful and I'm with him and I'm on my phone to someone or something like that and not giving him his attention. But equally, sometimes he can be disrespectful back to me and I can sit there and have a conversation with him and you can just see it all melt away and you can see him going, oh, yeah, OK, yeah, I, I shouldn't have done that. I mean, I'm not exaggerating at all. And it dissolves away like this and there's no resistance to it. And what's yeah. interesting is I, as a human, find it really easy to let go of any ego when I'm interacting with animals much easier than I do when I'm interacting with human animals. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Because they're a mirror, because they're reflecting back, um, you know, their own um, energy. And, yeah, so it's like we, we're chameleons. We, we try to adapt to whatever situation mm -hmm. we're in. So when we're with humans, we, we act like <laughs> animals. We act like animals. Yeah. I think some of that has come through survival, too. You know, you're talking about your daughter being – happy birthday to your daughter, by the way, being yes. – 20 which is still like so young that's still what you're still kind of a baby at 20 and having all these like huge questions asked of her that are very very serious questions and you know I was thinking about here and especially I think there's probably a problem all over the western world where more and more kids are getting to, to more and more debt because mm -hmm. they feel like they have to keep up with this certain standard that is expected of them you know, we had mm -hmm. like keeping up with the Joneses, you know, and, and this cycle starts to happen. And I think, yes, showing that vulnerability of being like, I was wrong, I apologize, or saying, I don't know, all of a sudden puts you in this uh, place of, of major fear of not mm -hmm. surviving. Um, yeah. If, if you're if you're a young person in Australia, you can just throw the idea of buying a house out the window. It's just so ridiculously expensive here anywhere to buy a house. It's just not really a viable option for young people anyway these days. So, you know, it, it, it's not something that's um, a, a realistic goal anymore. Yeah, yeah. that's all the same. I'm yeah, I just saw someone posted earlier, like in the 1950s in America, you know, a family of four, two parents and two kids could buy a house, send the kids to college, have cars all on one salary. So mm. we're seeing that. And that wasn't that long ago. You know, we're seeing this, this like con this entrapment, 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 entrapment that. Um, and, you know, the thing is, is like if we talk about what's happening now, the 99 percent versus the 1 percent, there are more of us than them. So we've allowed this to happen. Yeah. We've mm. stayed in that birdcage. Yeah, and not flown out. But just, just, just being compliant and passive, and it, on some level too, that they meet our needs to a certain degree, so that we're comfortable, or, or we have a certain level of quality of life, and so we don't stand up and change anything, or we don't, we don't, don't make a noise because we're, we're we're managing, okay, you know, and and it's sort of been set up that way as well. I know in Australia, people say, you know, that they've given us a certain quality of life here so that um you know they can continue with all the nefarious stuff that's going on underneath while we just coast along you know but yes yeah it's very difficult when you're caught in that trap to make the time to actually even dream I mean I know a lot of um people that if you ask an adult and sort of say 
what would your dream life look like? What, what's your real passion? They find it. They never know. <laughs> I don't know. Do they? they know because <laughs> it's so drummed out of them that you can mm. even follow your passion. Yeah. Um, but one of the things I find quite interesting on this sort of note, sort of linking it back a bit, is a lot of the conversations. So we talk about sort of moving into the age of Aquarius and the new way of doing things. And I've loved all the chats. Um, a lot of people really valuing what I would call traditional skills, you know, building, plumbing, farming, mechanic, all the things that academics can frown on, realising these are the skills that are so important to not only survival, but thriving and having a really thriving community. Um, but I'm still surprised at a lot of the focus that there is on the financial side of things in a lot of these talks, because you know, to, uh, okay, there's so many different things you can look in. You know, there's the, the precious metals, there's the cryptos, there's all things like this. But isn't it funny how it's very difficult for most humans to distance themselves from the focus of the finances? Right. Even yeah. though all we've been through this year, it still yeah. seems to be something that it's very difficult for people to distance themselves well, away. That's part of the enslavement system that has been indoctrinated into them, that um, this is their security. This is their, um, you know, when you think of the chakras, it's the base chakra of their foundation of existence. And so, um, you know, that, that's all been a, a definite ploy by the dark. And, and you know, once, once the whole money system goes and we function differently, that, that's part of stepping out of this whole uh, imprisonment system. And, um, you know, I'm look, looking forward to that much myself it'll be great <laughs> I know I couldn't agree I know I'm not like a money person like that's not even before I mean I don't understand the stock market I don't understand like that's just not it's like you know the subjects that you think about the um the peanuts when the adults would talk wah, 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 wah. anytime anybody <laughs> talks about like anything having to do with that it's just wah, 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 wah. like it just yeah, doesn't, yeah, yeah. you know yeah. I want to be like that lots of things, <laughs> art and all that kind of stuff but that's confused me because and, and granted again I don't know I don't know what the new money system is going to look like I hear I there's a lot of respected people and I hear what they have to say and it does sound like we're moving in we know that the old system has to go down because it's associated with the with the old system um but it sounds to me from what I understand is that we're all going to be okay yeah, we're going to have our yes. needs taken care of. Totally. So why are we still trying to play the money system mm. in the new world like we played it in the old world? Exactly. Oh, definitely. Doesn't it's make sense to me. <laughs> Spot on. It's a real. I think it's a real trap. I think it, it is very difficult to again to step out of that box because you're right. And you know, and, you know, we have all been so trapped by it, or a lot of us have allowed ourselves to be trapped by it. But at some stage, we've got to step into that trust and stop focusing because if all, you know, there's all this talk about, you know, accumulating wealth for future generations and things like this. And it's like, that is so the old system. This is so the old system. And yet, you know, I think it's really important that somehow we break three of it. And, and yeah. even like, you know, my, one of my, new, it's not New Year yet, but one of my New Year's resolutions is I refuse to talk about, and the V word, I just refuse to engage in those conversations with people today. Today, I cannot tell you how many times I've had to shut down that conversation, but it, I think we've just got to, the more we all practice it, of moving into these new ways of doing, surely that's going to move us forward in that direction a lot quicker. Yeah, a perfect way to go forward, I think, is to think about what does the world need. You know, what 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 mm -hmm. unique gifts and skills have I got that can match the the need in the world, the demand in the world? How can I give to the world? And and if you naturally um, give to the world in the way that it needs you, then you, you, all your needs will be met because it's an energetic thing. You know that that the energy will come back to you in the way that's appropriate. And and the more you give in the world, the more that you meet the demands of what the world needs, the more that that flow will come back to you. And that's why we've got to think about things now. 
you know um is there a person down the street that needs something you know what can i what can i do to support them um so that they get their needs and maybe there's someone else in the same boat that needs that you know just just being really open to how this new world um is going to look and 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 what are the d demands um required for really um creating a foundation for a new earth that supports everyone yeah i agree there's a verse in the bible my mother used to say to us all the time when we were kids she would make us go work the soup kitchen and she would always say to whom much is given much is expected and so when yeah. we think about wealth we oftentimes think about money but wealth is also your spiritual knowledge your your intelligence and i know for the those of us you know when the plug is pulled which we don't know that when that's going to happen a lot of us do want that like vindication of like i was right you know but on the flip side to whom much is given much is expected all of us have been in this unique situation where we figured things out or understood that something was happening a lot earlier than our fellow humans and so we're gonna have to really help people and tuck our pride away and be there to hold their hand like to give back to them even the yes. ones that we can't stand because they've been not nice to us but to be there and to be that wealth of support for them and so it moves out of that whole idea of like money being the only wealth you mm -hmm. know and just your essence of who you are as a as a um fragment of the cosmos you and know Contribute and what you can contribute to that. You know, I mean, I, I've been thinking, I've had quite a few clients saying to me, I feel very isolated and alone. So I'm thinking, well, how can I help resolve that? And I'm thinking, well, maybe starting up online groups for people. And I, I was thinking of names where people can come together and support and nurture one another and help, you know, really develop their own uh, divine soul missions and, and their inherent gifts and bring them out into the world. You know, groups that can do that on an online way. If anyone's interested, contact me because <laughs> I, I'd love to, you know, start up. And I've had people asking me about this and it's trying to match a, a, a need that's out there. Yeah. Well, I think too, you know, we were kind of talking about that, like all these, you know, I think a lot of people when this, when the pull, the plug is pulled, just they have no clue who they actually are because yeah. they've been so uh, beaten down by who they should be that they can't remember who they are. And so the first step would be giving them space to actually rediscover themselves and rediscover their soul in their body because so I know that sounds silly but from my time as a yoga student and teacher so many people are just they have the, they're just out of their body all the time yes they don't even yes. know what's going on with them actually Absolutely. earlier i got a message to, to to mention that which is just to sit in a and i know it sounds weird but just sit in a darkened room and just be still and just see what happens you know turn the lights off make sure that all, all sort of interruptions are you know turn your phone off all that sort of thing and just sit in a, in a darkened room and just be still and see what comes to you um in, in that space because our um, nervous systems are so overstimulated mm -hmm. that just the ability to be still and have zero stimulation you're going to start connecting on the inner and and i got i got that message earlier i think catherine was talking to, to mention it so yeah yeah. yeah, no, it's so important. And it's one of the biggest gifts that it's been from not being well for the last couple of weeks has been exactly that because I'm I'm the type of person, um, there's so many things I love doing that I'm sort of quite busy. It's busy because I love doing the animals and I love my work and I love mixing with my friends. So, you know, I don't, there's so many things I love doing it, but what I have to make more time for is that stillness and sitting there and I have had such a complete electronic detox over Christmas I've had some real awakening moments about ah, oh, okay and and also the other thing is it's it's you can see why they say time is a healer because we could we were talking at the start about all of us and I've definitely said it on numerous occasions that you know oh come on we want this to hurry up we want it to be over and I can see some of that because I know a lot of people, myself included, where some um, family members are uh, still being very actively forced for this and they're resisting, resisting, but the, the resistance gets harder and harder the longer you leave it in some of their circumstances. So I can see why speeding up is really important to that. But for me, for example, one of the biggest things I've learned since I've got older is to wait before responding. And what this has taught us all to do is to wait, 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 stop, st and and 
and feel into the situation more and educate ourselves more and um, do some alternative research and and does thing does this make sense or not? I mean, I had a brilliant interview with Cliff High. I mean, all these are brilliant, but you know, he was saying, well, you know, when you take the Mister T thing, you know, is he an idiot? No, is it this? So, you know, stop trying to sort of microanalyze every single word and think, trust, there's a reason for this. There's a reason for this because so this this forced um, delay in everything, certainly everyone I've been speaking to of this, you can really see how it has benefited everyone by not, you know, as they say, what is it, um, rushing with haste for Brent at your leisure or whatever it, it, it's uh, it, it's so important sometimes just to stall and and just wait one of the greatest spiritual tests is patience absolutely like <laughs> throughout my life it's like a constant learning patience 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 when, when you when you're a cosmic being and you're used to being on other planetary systems you uh, manifest things like this you know boom <laughs> and they happen you come here into the 3d dense reality and everything's like walking through you know mud <laughs> it's so yeah. slow 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 and you just have to continually be learning for me you know that lesson of uh, patience release attachment release expectation just you know trust that it's all going to be perfect in divine alignment so funny you say that because down here in the south the southeastern part of the united states the deep south we most my accent isn't as strong compared to south people talk real slow they have a very yeah. southern drawl and the weather out here is like it's like walking through a bowl of hot soup because it's so human so we say that's why people talk slow because it's just too damn hot to talk fast so so you got to channel your inner southerner and be like it's too damn hot to talk fast so we're just going to take this slow but yeah it is it is that 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 um and i love how you said the release of expectation Catherine and i've talked about this before ex and i love how you said that you're uh, the guy said once i didn't break your heart i broke your expectation yeah you know so, so true and so so powerful because we've all got so many expectations and often we don't even know i mean i can think of things with with friends recently where I didn't even realize I had the expectations until they got broken yeah and then you know and this is you know again one of life's constant um learning lessons is that we do have these expectations and things but we've got to realize those are our expectations and they're not going to necessarily match other people's you know the interesting thing is because that's happened to me so many times in my life I'm sure everybody where you expect something different a different outcome than what you get but it's interesting at looking back, even when you're going through something stressful where your expectations have been broken, if you can take a moment to look back on your life where you've been very disappointed by your expectations not being met, normally that leads you to even an even better outcome that you never could have planned, you know? So even in that, that little scenario, just to let go of, of knowing, of having an expectation of what's to come, when's to come, how's to come, because none of us know, none of us know anything, but we know it is coming because it's, it's, it's astrological. It's, you can't escape it. So yeah, it's the expectation, you know, yeah. work on yourself. And I think a lot of people with the Mr. T thing too, they, they still are in this like matrix based um, seat where they want someone else to do it for them. They're expecting yeah. someone else to do it for them. And that might be why we're delayed. Yeah, yeah. Point yeah. Is I have to agree with it. So it's like, you know, it shouldn't make any difference what he says about that. That is, it's like we were saying about the financial. That's so the old way. Mm -hmm. I like to say so 3D. <laughs> But, you know, it's, it's so the old way of doing things. And it's like we have to break this pattern of yeah. needing to be told what to do. It's brilliant listening to stimulating conversations. I mean, I've listened to all sorts of things. So I've had lovely conversations with Dr. Robert O. Young, who doesn't believe that viruses exist. And then you'll have conversation with someone else and a, another equally brilliant natural scientist and things to believe something else. And they're all really fascinating. Um but there's very rarely one answer to things anyway. It's very rarely that simple. And hmm. you, know, you, you put it through your own filter system too. You know, does this resonate for me? Uh, and that's all uh, going to be dependent on your own level of evolution. Um, so, yeah, and I, and I think that if we are able to um, stop um, making judgments on things and just understanding that um, everyone has their own truth, that, that, that's mm -hmm. going to just make such a difference.
Yeah, absolutely. I, yeah. And it's, it's interesting. I, I say it all the time. One of my favorite quotes is by Aristotle. It's a sign of an intelligent mind when you can entertain an idea without accepting it. And I think what you're doing when you're listening to so many stimulating conversations, you're able to listen to these conversations without judgment, but entertain them. You don't have to accept them and then go listen to somebody else. And I see it a lot in the yoga world too. There, there's so many times where a teacher said something to me years ago. I didn't quite underst understand at the moment, but I, I remembered it. And then like years later, it'll hit me and I'll be like, oh, that's what they meant. I get it now. I get it now. <laughs> so it's like, you can kind of store stuff away, but you don't have to have, we are in this weird, weird place in our lives where you have to have an, an, an immediate polarizing opinion on something and you cannot waver you cannot look across the street and i remember growing up and i'm i mean this was what 30 or 20 years ago this wasn't that long ago we had to study debate in school where we yes. were given different sides of the same argument that we had to, to learn how to debate that and it might not have you had to debate a side that you might not have agreed on you know and and i feel like that that um that, that, of course, leads to critical thinking skills, which I think a lot of humanity is lacking right now, that we have to be able to have our own critical thinking skills. And yeah. I can't, no one can give you that. You know, it's like that whole idea of gnosis versus edio that you, we see in the early uh, Christian uh, uh, scriptures, where they believed that gnosis or inner knowing was far more superior than edio or outer knowing. You know, EDO would be PhDs, uh, your education, all that kind of stuff that the world is giving you. But that gnosis, that inner knowing came from your own practice, your yeah. own taking in information and just feeling what you needed to feel. And once you have that gnosis, no one can take it away from you. You're not going to well, be dependent on somebody else. I think we're competing against things that we don't even really fully understand or know about, and and not to be negative, but we're we're, we're receiving um, frequencies and subliminal programming from from very advanced technology, yeah. and and we don't even know it's there. So when when you don't have that really strong internal um, connection or knowing, then you're very much like a um, leaf in the breeze, just floating around, and and very vulnerable to to all this stuff that's going on. So um, people need to realise that this stuff is happening and that we need to build these really strong internal foundations so that we can overcome, you know, all that energetic, um, um, well, it's um, what, what you call infiltration or um, energetic um, indoctrination, brainwashing, you know, all that sort Battlefield. of stuff. Battlefield, because that's really what this is about, isn't it? This has nothing to do with politics. This has nothing to do with health. This has nothing to do with countries. This is yeah. about your spiritual sovereignty. Mm, yeah. And that when you have that spiritual sovereignty, you, you know how to like say, say, I don't know, or no, or let me wait on this. And you could say it without, you, you could put that boundary up. Um, yeah. And you're right. So many people are just going to get pushed around. Like, like that, I love that leaf in the breathes scenario mm. because they've lost that. Mm. It's still there. You and still find it. And it comes with the connection to Mother Earth. I, I saw a wonderful um, original elder speaking and she was saying that just lie down on the ground with your stomach, imagining like an umbilical cord going deep into the earth and connecting to Mother Earth and just stay lying on the ground until you feel that connection really building with Mother Earth. And, and that, again, is a universal consciousness, universal knowing, universal knowledge. When you, when you tap into that Mother Earth energy, which the originals knew how to to do so well um, that that is going to be um, that source of um, internal foundation that allows you not to be that leaf flowing flowing around in the breeze and when you were and saying oh, go ahead take it. sorry Catherine well it's just so interesting and that sort of brings me full loop back to what I was saying about the humans not not being the center of everything all the time is because that grounding is so so important and that connection that then connects you to everything that is and I think you know this is where so many of our animals who live in human um, environments get so wrong because we, we get so out of balance is because we stop them grounding a typical example is putting metal shoes on horses is I mean, can you imagine? Just completely stops their grounding experience. And so similar I just, with uh, you know shoes that we have, a lot of them have got rubber soles, exactly. and that disconnects us from the earth on purpose. It's like sunglasses disconnecting us from the sun and the encodings from the sun on purpose. These were all things that were put in to stop that connection to our divine connection to stop us evolving. I stopped wearing yeah. sunglasses like a year ago because I found that out. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. a yard yeah. one of the rages. Yeah, or clock. You know, watch your simile interfere with our energetic field. We, we tuning into time. We can do that anyway, intuitively. If you don't wear one of these, I mean, I know sometimes for things you, you need to look, but um, on the whole, you can do that intuitively, and this can interfere with your energetic field. So, you know, there's so many things like that that have been um, accepted by us that actually had a nefarious purpose underneath. It's like yeah. do- well, dogs can smell time, can't they? Like dogs know. Uh, what time, you know, I'm sure everyone has a dog. Your dog knows when you're coming home. Oh, they yeah, can't definitely. read the clock. They can smell. They know. They don't know the actual 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock. They can well, smell it. it. Inuit elders had the same thing. They would, um, the, the husband would go off and hunt and he'd be gone for a couple of days. And and just as he uh, walked into the door, uh, the, the, the wife, the, the mother would have his food cooking ready to eat the minute he walked in the door. She would know intuitively when he would be coming back home. She'd have it all perfectly, you know, ready for him the minute he went. And he might have been gone two days or three days or something. <laughs> you know, it's just mm-hmm. that, that ability that we have that we can regain if we, if we practice it. Yeah, yeah just amazing. getting rid of all the gadgets, all the things, and just, as you say, tuning in. And, and if you don't use it, you lose it. So we, we've talked a lot about the 90% junk DNA that we all know is ridiculous. But when you start reusing these skills, it's amazing how quickly they come back again. It's like riding a bike or riding a horse. You never forget, even if you haven't done it for 40, 50 years. And but it's so easy to sort of reawaken these bits of our our mind, our soul, and things if you practice it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And it wasn't that far off. I mean, think about it. What clocks came into play big time with the industrial revolution, which was what a little over a hundred years ago. You mm. know, so so with the trains. So we haven't really been tied to clocks for that long. You know, mm. our ancestors. We that it should not be hard for us to go back and get into that that rhythm, you know, of, of understanding time without the actual time, you know. When I think of the Industrial Revolution, I always think of the Charles Dickens books. You know, they yeah. sum up the energy, the atmosphere of that so well. It's just so sort of dark and bleak and, oh. Yeah. <laughs> My favourite story is the Oliver Twist and oh, the 1968 yeah. movie, the musical. That was my favourite movie oh. as a kid. I love those songs. Yep. I love to dance. Food, food glorious food. Yes, yes. <laughs> the workhouses, the, you know, yeah. we, we, yeah. we soon had child labor laws after that. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Yeah. We, it was supposed to be a good thing, but it ended up really hindering us, um, that industrial mm-hmm. revolution. So Absolutely. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that was a big ploy from the dark as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. You can see so many of these things now, but the good thing is, is, once you're aware of it, you're not going to let that happen again. We're not. Exactly. Once exactly. you see it, you can not see it. Yep. Yeah. And the, the awakening is huge. I mean, you've just got to look at the levels of our, you know, numbers in protests around the world and, you know, millions and millions all over the planet now are gathering um, and, and every week it's building. So this is, this is very exciting. And um, I think uh, we're just on the verge of this huge um, awakening for the masses. So um, that, that's something that we can maybe spend time um, visualising to, to help it, you know, get over the line. Yeah, we just got to cross that, that threshold. I know I learned recently that we, speaking of time, we've been doing this wrong. We've been looking at dates when really we we're, we're need to be looking at portals and when certain portals open, which for most humans, that's even for me, sometimes that's like, what? So that comes back to that, just letting go and having faith and um, being like, I don't know, but I have courage and I have faith that it's all going to turn out the way it's supposed to, whatever that looks like beyond my expectation. So, yeah. And when you do that, you free up so much emotional space for yourself because all that time that subconsciously or consciously we're spending worrying you free up all that time oh my mum's little clock going um and how english is that <laughs> and, um, we're just talking about time and that's hysterical but it is so it, it's amazing how it creates so much time when you stop worrying about things it's <laughs> Fantastic yeah. to do all the and, wonderful things that you want to. 
And it opens up also um, infinite possibilities that we have absolutely no idea what they could be because we, we limit our possibilities by having some sort of um, expectation of them. And so when you, when you totally release that, you actually get greater um, opportunities coming into you because they're even beyond what you would imagine for yourself. I know. I'll, I know it's getting, we've been on for a little over an hour, ladies. So I know we're getting, we're winding down. So I know it's getting late for you, Catherine, but I will say too, on top of that, my best friend growing up, her father said something to her once that I have held my whole life. I was sitting there and I heard them say, say this to her when we were preparing for college, for university and trying to make those grown up decisions at like 18 years old, you know, because you're so wise at 18. Her father said, if you, if you knew that you would never fail, what would you do? Mm. perfect if you knew that failing wasn't an option what would you do and the other thing is if you knew uh, that money wasn't an option too what would you do would you take do? money out of the equation as well and um think what you'd do then you know if there was no such thing what what would make you really really happy that and i think that's a great thing for people walking into this new earth that have lost that sense of self like to get back if, if all these limitations were gone yeah and i had nothing but success what would i do yeah. What would that look like? And you might be surprised. You'd probably get the answer right away. Perfect yeah. thing to ponder, everyone. Perfect thing to ponder when you're lying on the earth. <laughs> your belly button. <laughs> we want to see the pictures, everyone. Yes, please. please send us your picture then. <laughs> and we don't care how cold and wet it is in the UK. That's not an excuse. You'll still do it. <laughs> Australians, you've got no excuses. <laughs> the Georgians, you had 74 degrees outside here, which I know you guys are in Celsius. That's really mild. Like, this is tank top weather. So Georgians have no excuse either <laughs> to go out there and lie in the grass. So yes, we'll all be posting our selfies tomorrow. <laughs> so. oh, that, was fun, ladies. that was such fun. I'm so pleased that you have got the internet to go back on again. <laughs> <laughs> I know that was awesome. That was invigorating for me. Um, for everybody watching, leave us your opinions and your comments down this, the comment section below. And I'm going to be posting both Catherine and Medina's channel links in the description box below. I know most of you follow them, but I, for those who don't, I'm going to go ahead and put that down there and also be posting Medina's website. And Catherine, can I post your websites for your animal? Please too. I've got two. Um, so I'll send you the links to them afterwards. So one Please of them is my courses on and the other one's got i'm just uploading i'm a bit behind getting all my videos on there but there's some really good stuff there and recommendations and things like that so and i will be doing the same to you guys as well thank you so oh, much okay. ladies of course, course. Of course. If, if people would like a session with me and they want to mention this show with Catherine and bryce um i can give you a 10 percent discount as well so <laughs> amazing well i'll put that in the description box too guys <laughs> so awesome awesome well i love Love both of you ladies so much it's such an honor to be your friend in this life be part of your so i know virtual hug part of your soul family to these beautiful beautiful women um hopefully soon we'll be able to celebrate in person when we're teleporting to each other but <laughs> but we won't hold any expectations on when that date is we know it's coming soon though and lots of love to everybody watching as i've said many times on my channel you guys are just as much a part of these channels as we are we wouldn't be here having these conversations without you. And I do look forward to seeing your input in the comment section. I do try to read most of the comments um, just to see what you guys have to say too, because as Ram Das says, we are just walking each other home and your opinion is very, very val valuable. So please make sure you leave us those in the comment section below. All right, guys, lots of love. Happy, Happy New Year. Year. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.